You know what they say, if you fail 14 times, try, try again. Because Kevin McCarthy's poised to win the race for House Speaker in a 15th vote that's going on right now. This is when things got hot right after the last vote. McCarthy confronting Florida Republican Matt Gates. Gates had hinted earlier in the day that he would switch his vote for McCarthy and did not. That's Congressman Mike Rogers getting physically restrained when he lit into Gates. This is wild stuff. You see Colorado's Lauren Boebert sitting there silently. CNN is reporting that Gates will switch his vote to McCarthy in this ongoing round, and that will finally end it. Republicans have been unable to figure out who they want to lead their slim new majority. That's kept Congress from getting any work done, and it's led to the most votes for Speaker since before the Civil War. But how he got here had a lot to do with the effort of Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. 9 News reporter Luis DeLeon is along to talk about this. And uh, Luis Boebert was a vocal leader of the opposition, but earlier tonight, she folded. She did, Kyle. Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert was part of that handful of far-right GOP lawmakers that tried to stop this from happening at all. But tonight, she folded and voted present, which means it's a vote for no one, but it makes it easier for McCarthy to win. Now, another piece on how we got here had to do with Republican Congressman Ken Buck, whose district covers a majority of the Eastern Plains. He seemed to be all over the place at some points, voting for McCarthy through the first six ballots and eventually saying that McCarthy should step aside. Ultimately, he voted for McCarthy. As for Boebert, she has never really had difficulty grabbing attention, of course, but DU political science professor Seth Maskett told us this week that it's still hard to say, in his opinion, what Boebert's endgame really is here. In some ways, uh, this becomes a win for her, or at least, you know, something she can claim that she stood in the way of. And that, at least, uh, you know, I imagine she's sort of seeing herself as one of the, the leaders of a new version of the Republican Party, one that is... Um, more in the Trump mold uh, than even the current Republican Party is and, and probably more uh, ideologically conservative. Now, this, of course, is after Boebert vowed to take the temperature down and focus on policy, Kyle. And, uh, and, and that pledge for more civility lasted, I think, all of about 24 to 48 hours. If I'm hearing correctly, Matt Gates on the floor in this 15th vote just voted present. Is that correct? That is correct. Matt Gates has voted present, which yeah. means we may not have a winner on the 15th round. CNN sourcing that he would switch his vote to McCarthy mm -hmm. apparently did not happen. Now, Luis, they keep these votes open so he could come back and he could change his vote. Maybe there will be another face-to-face -face confrontation between the men on the House floor. This has been absolutely wild. And the end result, no matter what shakes out tonight, if McCarthy ends up winning, he is going to be completely beholden to this far right group because he's had to promise them the world to bring him in line. As we speak right now, they're around, oh, I would say 133 votes in. So we still have maybe 10 to 15 minutes before we know that final count here going forward. Wow. All right. So if Gates stays at, at present, then that means that they've got to flip one other vote. So maybe there's one other vote that's going to flip. See. Yeah, it's absolutely well. Luis, thank you. So you have political dysfunction on display in Congress late into the night, two years to the day after the violent attack on the Capitol by Trump supporters. They beat Capitol Police and stormed the building, attempting to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Congress held a 142nd moment of silence today to acknowledge the 140 officers seriously hurt defending the Capitol. Members of Congress were joined by the families of fallen officers and read their names aloud. President Biden also held an award ceremony at the White House. Twelve presidential citizen medals to honorees, including those in law enforcement, politics, and elections workers. The president said the honorees erode a debt of gratitude. Remember your bravery. America owes you, owes you all, I really mean this, a debt, a debt of gratitude. One we can never fully repay unless we live up to what you did. The Justice Department continues the largest investigation in its history. It's already interviewed more than 950 people. Pardon me, more than 950 people have been arrested, arrested, more than 950 arrests for alleged participation in the insurrection. Roughly half have pleaded guilty, 40 convicted at trial. The House Select Committee that also investigated January 6th has said that prosecutors should be charging former President Trump and some of his associates. But that decision ultimately lies with the special counsel overseeing the investigation. Two teenagers are without a mom tonight. Police in Aurora responded to a domestic violence call about three this afternoon near Buckley and Hampton. Police say a man and a woman began fighting in their home. 
Police say a man shot a woman, then himself. They both died. Two teenagers who were at the house weren't hurt. Police say the people who died were their mother and stepfather. Every year, domestic abusers kill dozens of Coloradans. There were at least 91 deaths in 2021, the highest total since the state board started tracking the data about five years ago. Here's 9 News reporter Jennifer Meckles. Within the pages and pages of this annual report from the Colorado Domestic Violence Fatality Review Board, a reminder of the very real people reflected in these numbers. 91 of them who died in 2021 in a domestic violence situation. 45 were the primary victims. 14 were collateral victims, people like children, family members, or other bystanders. And four of those collateral victims were children. The perpetrators of the domestic violence also counted in this report. We've now calculated domestic violence fatalities for five years in a row and 2021 has the most fatalities we've recorded. The review board falls within Democratic Attorney General Phil Weiser's office. In 81% of these deaths, the killer used a firearm. And among the board recommendations, better strategies to get the guns out of their hands. Every tragedy begs the question, what could we have done to save lives? We've lost people and then families have been destroyed. Where maybe if we thought, had we removed a firearm earlier, we could have saved a life. This report also points to some research showing victims are at highest risk immediately following their separation from the perpetrator within those first few weeks or really that first year following the separation. Weiser said that's why people really have to leave those relationships with support, law enforcement, housing, or many other wraparound services. Never easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Jenny, thank you. Police arrested a man in Indiana this afternoon, just hours after he murdered a Wheat Ridge gas station owner in his own business. According to Wheat Ridge Police, 53-year-old Vesharaj Lamachane was shot and killed about eight last night during an apparent robbery. Police say after the murder, the suspect, 26-year-old Jonathan Chance, stole Lamachane's car and took off. Chance was arrested this morning in Indiana. Police say they tried pulling him over, but Chance lost control of the car and rolled it several times. He wasn't hurt, he was taken to custody, yet it's still unclear when he'll be extradited back here to Colorado. We've learned more about the stabbing at Barnes & Noble in Boulder yesterday. Apparently, the manager was stabbed after confronting a man who was suspected of stealing gummy bears. The 52-year-old manager was taken into the hospital and later released. Police say the suspect fled but was arrested within minutes of the stabbing. The suspect, 42-year-old Scott Schwelling, is now being charged with first-degree assault. Supporters of Buffalo Bills' DeMar Hamlin are placing tributes outside the UC Health Center in Cincinnati. Candles, flowers, balloons, custom signs, all showing their compassion and support for him. There are more positive updates on Hamlin's recovery after he went into cardiac arrest during Monday night's game against the Bengals. Doctors finally removed his breathing tube and he was able to talk with his team. To see that boy's face, to uh, see him smile, see him go like this in the camera, it was, it was, it was everything. So, uh, and then to hear him talk to us, uh, it was it was literally everything, and uh, that's what we needed. The NFL is getting ready to show love for Hamlin this weekend. All 32 teams will have the option of wearing this T-shirt with Hamlin's jersey number during warm-ups, and then the Bills players will wear special patches with Hamlin's number during their Sunday game against the New England Patriots. While the city of Denver waits for the sun to melt the snow still on the roads, the city's giving warnings to homeowners and businesses who have not yet shoveled their sidewalks. Usually only a few of those notices turn into fines, which suggests that the process works. Property owners in Denver have 24 hours after a storm to shovel. The city relies on complaints to 311 to enforce that rule. We talked to one guy who had no problem saying publicly, yeah, he lets the city know who's breaking the rules uh, along West Colfax. If we encounter properties that, you know, it's been 24, maybe 48 hours, haven't shoveled, um, hard to get the stroller through, we'll uh, pull up the PocketGov app and send in a notice to 311 saying the, the property's not been shoveled. In the first five days of 2023, the city inspected 755 complaints. In 180 cases, they found the sidewalk was already cleaned up. They issued 567 notices to people saying, all right, clean up or pay 150 bucks. Of those 500 plus notices, only eight people refused and ended up getting tickets. 
Hundreds of people waited outside a barbecue restaurant in Superior today, welcoming back what feels like an old friend. Wayne Smoke Shack burned down in the Marshall Fire, and today was their official grand reopening. Some customers waited over an hour to finally get to the front of the line, but the people in line know it's not just about the food. We are so excited. It's just overwhelming to be here a year later after the fire. It's not just about the food. I mean, maybe that's silly to say, but um, it's a community thing. I sound so cliche, but um, you know, this, this has really become a fixture of our little community here in Superior, and uh, it's nice having them back. The official opening happened at 11 this morning. However, the first customer was already in line by 6 a.m. Take you back to the floor of the U.S. House in Washington, where Kevin McCarthy is poised to win the speakership on the 15th vote. Here's what's happening. The last of the holdouts are voting present, as Colorado's Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert did earlier this evening. By voting present, they don't vote for McCarthy, but they lower the bar for how many votes he needs to get. If the current pattern holds, McCarthy will be elected speaker McCarthy. before we get off the air tonight. Lawler. I had kind of been pushed out of the church when I was growing up. Church in Inglewood is creating a loving space for those who have not always felt welcome. A major breakthrough in the fight against Alzheimer's, and it could be available soon. And if you have outdoor plans this weekend, we're going to see sunny skies, mild temperatures. I'll have all of those details for you just ahead in my full seven-day forecast.